Uh, should I begin, Ram? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning to all. It's with great honor that I welcome you all, visitors and members, to attend the Entrepreneurs Network. I trust you all are comfortable to, to begin today's meeting. I'm Rahul Amrute, Chairman, shouldering the responsibility of the current tenure. In my task, I'm ably supported by Manoj Tehliani, the Secretary, Mangesh Patole, the Relationship Manager, and Ram Kumar, who is our social media head. Ten the Entrepreneurs Network is a not-for-profit organization. The single-minded focus of Ten is to help entrepreneurs from different business fields to come together and succeed. To know more about Ten, I would kindly request Mangesh to please play a small AV. Yes, Mangesh. Yeah, Ram. Yeah, Ram. So I'll just confirm. You can see the screen. No? Yes, yes, very much. Thane. Maharashtra's major industrial town, fastest growing and slated to be the most happening commercial hub. Over the last decade, Thane has grown from a small suburban town to a large self-sustaining metropolis. Proximity to the financial capital of the country has extended ample opportunities to Thane for becoming the richest district in Maharashtra with potent factors like well-planned infrastructure and low cost of operation. With growing opportunities and upcoming business ventures comes the growing need for business networking to learn, to explore, to connect and to share avenues for mutual growth. Welcome to the Entrepreneurs Network, popularly known as TEN. Established in 2010 with the intent of providing a platform for entrepreneurs to share their experience, to learn and to educate fellow entrepreneurs along with generating business opportunities for mutual growth. Our motto, connect, breakthrough and prosper. Uh, in 2009, basically I was totally confined to the four walls of my own retail outlet. Probably that time I was feeling the need to get out of that, uh, uh, those uh, uh, binded four walls. So there was a business networking group. I joined that and after one and a half years, basically uh, there was some uh, uh, disconnect with that particular group. So uh, we wanted to start something which was uh, more Indianized. Uh, we wanted to do something to build a community of uh, entrepreneurs. And in 2010, we uh, started this uh, 10 Entrepreneurs Network. 10 is a close-knit community of different business verticals across industries. Uh, 10 business opportunity. We have been in 2009. Growth has been in I love 10 as a network because it is very different from the other business networks what you see. And it has helped me a lot in my overall development, for my business, for my relations. And what I found, a people around us are all wanted to grow in their business and help the society around. And I am so happy to join the 10. After coming here, uh, I found a different uh, friendship, a different uh, support, support system. Ten members contribute connections, ideas and time to help Ten grow. Members are rewarded with training workshops, insights, network and camaraderie offered by other like-minded entrepreneurs. They meet alternate Wednesdays from 7.15 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. What I liked about 10 is uh, more of a kind of a learning platform. So I learned a lot from 10 from through different different sessions, different workshops. What I like about 10 is core functionality, which is continuous learning for entrepreneurs. That is, we can say it is a core function of 10 on which it uh, operates. 10 has been extremely beneficial to me in enhancing my personality and making me equipped to face the challenges as an entrepreneur. Connecting breakthrough and prosper, which is the mantra of 10, is something which, uh, which is something which I was seeking for in my business career. 10 conducts activities such as 10 connect session, open minds, outdoor meetings, and annual conclave. 10 connect session provides a robust platform to its members for learning and sharing experiences, one-on-one -on -one interaction, apart from addresses by internal and esteemed guest speakers. 10 Engagement also extends to events such as Open Minds, where established entrepreneurs 
and business owners are invited to share their life lessons and growth stories while interacting with live audience. It's an event that Thaneites eagerly wait for. Outdoor meetings are fun coupled with learning. It aims at increasing member bonding and interactions beyond regular meetings. It includes site visits, visiting fellow members' workplace, and short outings which are extremely high on fun quotient. Vasudeva Kutumbakam, we are exactly following that. That really brings me to here. Since inception, 10 members have transacted more than 275 crores of business with its members and connects beyond 10 as we move ahead in this path of connecting for mutual growth. We look forward to more heads, more hands and more hearts to come together. We welcome you to attend the 10 Connect session to experience entrepreneurial energy, creativity and motivation. Let's give our classic 10 clap to 10 which goes 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 twice. 10. The Entrepreneur's Network Connect Breakthrough Prosper Over to you, Rahul. Thank you, thank you, Mangesh. I would kindly request our secretary, now Manoj, to introduce the speaker for the day, Sir Neeraj Shah. A warm welcome to you, Neeraj Ji. Yeah. Yes, Manoj. Uh, thank you, Rahul. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, welcome to our today's 10 webinar session. The topic for today's session is how to win high value clients using LinkedIn, investing just 15 minutes a day. In this dynamic 60 minute session, you will discover the key principles to rapidly become influential on LinkedIn. Today, as a speaker, we have with us someone who's a LinkedIn expert, international keynote speaker, founder and CEO of Titan Masterminds and a digital marketing coach. For the last 17 years, he has been working with entrepreneurs to use business networks to multiply their influence, income, and impact in their chosen niche. He grew BNI India, a business networking group from zero to 10,000 entrepreneurs across 28 cities in India. He helped these entrepreneurs use business networking to generate over US dollar 450 million in revenue. That's a big round of applause for this. He's the LinkedIn faculty member and top mentor for the Genius U platform, which serves 1.7 million entrepreneurs globally. So friends, please welcome Mr. Neeraj Shah with a big round of applause. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, really like to appreciate the entire 10 community, the Entrepreneur Network. Uh, I know many of the founders uh, right from it inception. So it's an absolute honor for me to be here today. Thank you. Um, so are we ready to get started? I'm here Absolutely. You're ready to get started. Yeah. Okay. If you can just type in yes. Awesome. Okay. So just want to make sure this will be interactive. And you can at the same time, if you are on a laptop or desktop, have also your LinkedIn profile uh, open. That will help you, okay? Uh, there are some very practical things that we can do uh, almost immediately. So I want to cover those. Um, okay, I'm just gonna pin this. Okay, awesome. Now, um, just, I, I want to know how many of you are using, you know, how often are you using LinkedIn? Are you someone who uses it daily? Are you using it weekly, monthly? Or you have a LinkedIn profile, but uh, you can't remember when you last uh, looked at it. <laughs> so if you can just type in the chat, I'd like to know. Okay, so Rob is using it daily. Okay, daily, lots of daily, some weekly few times a week, yes. Have a profile, but don't know when <laughs> used it last, okay, fair enough. Once in three days, okay. Very good, very good, okay. So uh, what I would like to do today is make sure that 
no matter whether you are someone who is a beginner or an advanced user, that you get tremendous value. What I really want to do is get you excited, not about networking, because you're already part of a networking group, so you understand the value of networking, but I want you to really get excited about the LinkedIn platform and where it is going and how you can really leverage it. Now, for all of you here, I, I want to make sure that uh, I put my screen up. Every now and then, I'm going to be sharing some tools, some uh, other websites, okay? I will look to put that in the chat uh, so that everyone will be able to um, get access to it. But in the meantime, right now, let me just initially get this uh, started. Okay. Now, um, if someone can just let me know if you're able to. Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. So how can you win high value clients using LinkedIn in just 15 minutes a day? Thank you so much for the introduction. If we're not already connected, then you know you can see that I have put in the chat uh, my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I decided to get involved with LinkedIn. I was an early adopter in 2005. And when I moved to India in 2004, I didn't know anyone except one person. So I was starting a business network from scratch. And at that time, I had been involved in an online network in the UK called Academy. And one of the things that I decided to do was to try it out and see how it would work. And I was able to get some really uh, good connections through that. So when I learned about LinkedIn in 2005, I decided to join it. But I was kind of on and off with regard to LinkedIn. But only in 2019, when COVID struck, and I had a business coaching uh, business where we were meeting offline, I realized that I needed to pivot online uh, as we didn't know when virtual, I mean, uh, in-person meetings were going to happen next. So I decided to really double down on LinkedIn. And uh, I've had some incredible opportunities, clients, and results happen. Uh, this particular top 200 global thought leaders, that opportunity happened through LinkedIn. They found me through LinkedIn. They interviewed me and... You know, I've been featured along with people like um, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith, who's one of the top business coaches in the world. I would say the number one and, and like that many other people. So what I want to show you is that within a short period of time, you can begin to really get traction on this particular platform. And I just crossed a million views uh, last week and I set a goal that I wanted to have a million post views on LinkedIn at the beginning of this year. So it is something that is definitely possible. It doesn't matter where you are starting off from. Um, my work on LinkedIn has been recognized uh, by the Genius U platform, which is an online network that serves 1.7 million entrepreneurs. So I'm one of their top mentors and a LinkedIn faculty member. Now, if you do have LinkedIn on your mobile phone, what you can do is you can launch the LinkedIn app and we can then connect automatically. And th this is great because if you're, you're next making a virtual presentation, if you have this little QR code that you can get from LinkedIn, then it becomes very easy for your audi audience to connect. So if you've seen the search bar to the right, uh, there's a little QR code. If you tap on it and then point it to the QR code that's on the screen, then you and I will be automatically connected. So there you go. You've already learned something new uh, on how to utilize LinkedIn. You can put this on your business card. You can also put this as a, a signature an email signature, okay? So you can use this right across uh, both in print and in uh, virtual settings. 
Okay, so let's get into why LinkedIn. Why LinkedIn? There are a number of key reasons why I love LinkedIn. First of all, we have now 774 million users. I was looking through a post that I had done 10 years ago on Facebook. You know, Facebook gives you that little prompt saying, hey, you know, 10 years ago you were doing this. So at that point in time, I had put a post congratulating LinkedIn for having crossed 70 million users. And since then, in, the, in this last 10 years, they've had a 10x growth and they've crossed 774 million users. A couple of years ago, Microsoft ended up buying this particular network and they paid $26 billion. So it is the world's number one business network. There are now, you know, every second, three people joining. Okay. Now, why are people joining? Because four out of five people that are on LinkedIn are driving decisions. They're decision makers. And in business, you want to connect to the decision makers. So, so that is super important. Okay, next, 44% of these particular users earn more than $75,000 per year. So therefore it's an incredible combination. They earn a high income and also they're a decision maker. Okay, so it, it's an awesome combination. Uh, next, sorry. This is a fun fact. 41% of millionaires are on LinkedIn. And um, I'm, I'm not talking, uh, you know, 10 lakhs. I'm talking uh, in dollars. So, you know, that's over seven uh, and a half to us, for us here. So that's really amazing. And we'll talk about this a bit more. There is great organic reach. What does organic reach mean? The, it means that if you're posting content on LinkedIn, you will be able to reach a lot more people than other networks, such as say Facebook or Instagram, et cetera, okay? And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to use this uh, in a moment. It is hyper-targeted. I really believe that is the reason why uh, Microsoft ended up paying so much to buy LinkedIn. What do I mean by hyper-targeted? You are able to search according to very specific job titles, locations, industries, uh, specialities within those industries, things like that, okay? So you're able to immediately connect and imagine having this 774 million user base and you're able to find the needle in a haystack. That's exactly what LinkedIn allows you to do. And there's so much you can do even on the free version of LinkedIn that what I generally recommend is not to go for the paid version of LinkedIn until you are already getting some decent business through LinkedIn. So the question I have for a moment is, and I'll uh, just for a moment stop sharing, is no matter where you are right now in terms of your LinkedIn journey, what are some of the challenges that you face? What, what is stopping you from being more active on LinkedIn? or where are you getting stuck? If you can just put that in the chat, then I can make sure that I tailor my presentation in such a way that I help answer and solve those particular problems that you may be facing. So just type in the chat. What is stopping you from using LinkedIn? Or what challenges do you face? that you wish you could get an answer for. Okay, so Shaviri, you need hand-holding, okay? Awesome, so I'm definitely gonna give you some of that today. Not really getting stuck, but don't know the possibilities. Yes, okay, so how do we expand? Okay, not much awareness, so definitely this is gonna help you. 
um, I've not known the direct benefits and him not, hence not using it. Yeah. So th this is one of the things that I want to help you with. I get way too many invites from people after accepting many I stop. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a, a great thing. Um, it's good to get invites, but you want invites from the right people and you want to accept the right people, not just anyone and everyone. Uh, people do not accept connection requests at times. Yes, that, that happens to everyone. Okay, but I'll show you some quick ways where you can get on people's radar. Okay, you lose focus. Okay, I think that that is a problem with social media. <laughs> so you've got to dedicate certain time and then, you know, switch it off after you can't have it on all the time. Uh, what are restrictions in the free versions? Uh, yeah, restrictions are there. I'm going to tell you more about those. Um, there are restrictions even on the paid version. <laughs> so it's not that. <laughs> yeah, Richard, one interesting comment from Shilpa Patil. Feels complicated to use. See, feels complicated <laughs> to use. So uh, complicated, uh, you know, compared to what is, is my question. Is it complicated? with respect to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or, you know, what is it? So, you know, that that's, and typically what, I, okay, so let, let me show you what are the things that stop uh, people, because I've been doing this now for quite some time, so I figured out what the three key problems are, okay? The key thing that I want to help you understand is that when you're looking at social media and you're looking at growing your business, lead generation is going to be a key element, okay? Because unless you have a way of generating leads, then you're not going to be able to convert those into business. And when we look at Twitter and Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, you know, is way above. So 274%, you know, uh, more lead generation then say, and this is from HubSpot, which is one of the top marketing companies. And they looked at both B2B companies, so businesses that sell directly only to businesses and business to consumer as well. So about half and half uh, of uh, each. So it, it works and it's a common misconception that people have that this is just for someone putting their CV on and someone who wants to get a job, okay? And what I'm going to say to you is that it's not. It, it is the number one business network in the world. And you've got to treat it in that way. Um, I, I'm operational on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I've definitely seen this. For me to reach a million views on uh, Facebook or Instagram would take me a lot more uh, and probably cost me a lot more as well. But you can see here LinkedIn uh, is organic reach. Uh, reach, you know, is tremendous. And um, my audience is right across these three platforms. So when I sent out this particular poll, I asked people right across these. So LinkedIn presents an untapped business opportunity for entrepreneurs and business development and sales teams. So what stops people from utilizing LinkedIn in the right way Okay, I found there are three things. Number one, they don't know how to be visible on LinkedIn in the right way. They don't know how to approach people and therefore you know, either the connection request doesn't get accepted or uh, they're not able to progress the conversation. And lastly, they don't know how to turn these connections into clients. There may be some of you out there that have a good number of connections, but you, you don't know how to monetize that network, okay? I want to help you address all of these particular you know, issues. So there are three profit levers that will help you win. Number one, you've got to stand out on LinkedIn. There are many other competitors on LinkedIn as well, and you've got to find a way to stand out. Secondly, You've got to strategically and proactively grow your network and grow a powerful network. And finally, once you have that network in place, how do you begin to monetize it? 
So these are the three things. And how do, how do we do that? First, we optimize your profile. Then I'm gonna show you how to find the perfect prospects using the free version of LinkedIn. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more about messaging and uh, posting content to help you become, stay visible and credible so that when people are ready and they're looking for your expertise, your product, your service, they are likely to turn to you, okay? So these are the things we will cover. So first things first, the foundation all comes down to this, how to have an all-star LinkedIn profile. This will quickly help you become visible and credible on the platform. And what I want to do with the limited time that we have is look at the 20% that will help uh, produce 80% of the results, okay? Now, this is a small fact that you may not know. LinkedIn is completely optimized for Google search. Therefore, if you put your name in into Google and you already have a LinkedIn profile, it's very likely that your LinkedIn profile will be the first uh, you know, thing that shows up on Google search. So it will be on the first page as the first thing. Secondly, people don't know that LinkedIn itself is a search engine and there are 6.7 billion searches being done on LinkedIn. The question is that do you show up? And lastly, when people are doing buyer research and particularly we're talking about B2B companies, okay? This is an incredible stat. 67% of B2B buyers will check out your LinkedIn profile before buying. Therefore, if it is not up to date and optimized properly, then you know we don't put our first, our best foot forward. And I want to help you make sure that you do that in the right way. So, what are some of the things that we need to focus on? So these are the 20% that will make 80% of the difference. A profile photo, a profile banner, a headline, a great about section and recommendations, okay? These are five things that work super well. Now I will go through each of these in a bit more detail uh, as much as I am able to do right now. And I'm going to also give you a cool uh, gift that will help you uh, improve this. Uh, so let's look at that, okay? So first things first, we are visual people. There's an amazing book by Dan Mapes called uh, The Spatial Web. And when they're looking at neuromarketing, which is, you know, how does the brain uh, look at and make decisions? The brain is highly visual. We are drawn to images. We're able to process an image 60,000 times faster than text. And we are hardwired to look for faces. And because we have the fight or flight uh, system built into us, typically when we look at a face, we are trying to quickly make a decision that is this person going to try and harm me in some way or am I safe with this person? And therefore the LinkedIn photo, when they do heat map analysis, where they look at where people look at and where do people click on a website, then the number one place that they look at is your profile photo. So let's make sure that we're able to get the profile photo right, okay? So this is some amazing stats that you need to know. You might wanna take a little snapshot of that. Profiles with a professional headshot receive 14 times more views, nine times more connection requests, and 36 times more messages. In fact, 
If someone sends me a connection request and they don't have a profile photo, then I will not accept that connection request. For me, you know, I, it is a question of trust. What are you hiding? <laughs> Why are you hiding? And, and, and what I want to tell you is there are some people that are uh, already on LinkedIn that have various facial issues, okay? Uh, they have skin problems, all sorts of things, but still they use their photo. And not only that, they are, you know, rock stars on LinkedIn. So, you know, people really appreciate and want to see that there's a real person, an authentic person, and there's nothing like a good photo which will help you do that. So what does a good photo look like? These are three clients of mine and all of them have got their profiles optimized, okay? So first things you can see that you can see their eyes, you can see a smile, you can see that the head is basically taking up about 60% of this circle because you typically see a circle and they're all smiling, okay? And even if you were to put your hand over their uh, mouth, okay, so that you couldn't see their mouth, you will know from their eyes that they are smiling. They've got the smiling eyes uh, that we can all relate to, okay? So how do you know whether your current photo is any good? We are now going to turn to artificial intelligence to tell us how good your current photo is, okay? So I wanna show you a really cool tool and it's a free tool, okay? So let me stop sharing. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share that particular uh, URL in the chat, okay? And then I want everyone to, um, okay? So I have clicked, I have put in the chat, there is something called snapper.com and there's a photo analyzer. And what, what you have to do is, click on that link and to, it will analyze your photo. And for it to do that, you will need to log in. You will need to allow LinkedIn access to this particular app, okay? And I'm gonna show you uh, my results, okay? So let's, let's show you uh, my results here. And you can see there's a score out of 100, okay? Uh, anything? 70 and above is good, okay? And not only that, you get a full analysis. So you can see in this particular photo, it's telling me my smile is bad. And, and that's one of the key things, but you know, I'm sorry, I just, I have small teeth, I have thin lips, you know, that, that's the way it is, okay? Uh, but literally, you know, like it gives you very specific things, you know, the composition, is it good? You can see the zoom is perfect. Uh, rule of two thirds. And, you know, if you want to understand this a bit more, it will explain what needs to happen. Okay. Uh, editing, of course, I have got a professional photo done and therefore it's scored nearly, it's nearly perfect. Uh, 95 out of 100. Okay. So I want you to type in uh, the chat. What is your score? I'm, I'm curious. The highest I've ever had anyone so far is at 87. At 87. So one of my clients was at 87. But as I said, anything above 70 is good. And the fact is that it doesn't matter what your score is, you can improve it. And you, you will know exactly what to do to improve it. So if everyone can put in the chat, what is your score? 70. Very good, my dear. Awesome. And then you can try out some different ones and, and, and check out and see which one scores higher. Okay, only one person has tried this. Right. 76, very good. 60, current, good. 
62. Dr. Wally, 59, 72. Awesome. Okay, very good. 64, 75. Very nice. Okay, so now you know if, if you go in uh, for for those of you who have a score slightly lower than seventy, okay, then what I suggest you do is you know look at the analysis and you know find pictures accordingly that uh, solve those particular issues and then try them out. Okay, so were, was that fun? Good, useful. Yes, group? yes, yes. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so I told you it'd be an interactive one. And uh, this is best done with the mobile, uh, not with the mobile phone. <laughs> okay, let's let's keep it uh, moving on. Okay, so some key things you want a passport format. So looking there into the camera, uh, you want to be appropriately dressed. Uh, so you know, think of if you were meeting your best number one client, how would you want to be dressed? You know, would you be in a suit and a tie or a blazer? Then accordingly, you want to have that. You want to have a neutral background. You don't want to have lots of writing uh, behind or you know, lots of too much color or things like that. Uh, you can use your brand color in the background. Uh, and very, 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 very important. Smile. Smile. It will, it will let the other person know your trustworthy factor will go up. Likeability is super important. So people are looking at, number one, can are you likable? Are you trustworthy? And do you look competent? Those are the three things that they're trying to identify very quickly uh, initially. And if you've got the right photo, that immediately conveys uh, what is possible, okay? Okay, so we've already shared this. Okay, what are mistakes that you should not do? I've shown you what, would work, but let a, let's look at things that you should not do. Okay, let's start from the top left. No group photos. This is all about you. You should be in the spotlight. Number two, the one in the middle top, uh, even if you're an avid marathon runner or whatever the case may be, or golf or whatever, okay, uh, or you, you don't want this, or you, you've taken a snap on your holiday with you wearing sunglasses, okay, your eyes need to be seen, okay? So very important, and you want professional dress. This is a professional business network, so we dress professionally. Okay, top right, the mean and moody look, very dark, you can hardly see an eye, uh, you know, one eye is missing, uh, you know, looks very intense, looks scary. Uh, you, you know, do you want to scare prospects? <laughs> or do you want to... <laughs> Uh, you know, positively impressed them. Okay, uh, bottom left. Uh, even if you're super proud about your wedding day and you've got the best photos in the world, okay? Uh, again, think it's a professional network, so how you think professional attire. Um, the bottom one in the middle, even if you're a doting parent or a family man or a woman, um, don't have it with the family. Again, this is a professional network just for you. The last one is very interesting. Uh, someone's obviously ended up going on an amazing holiday, decided to use that as their um, photo. So no company logos or no photos without a face. Again, you know, it reeks of it being a fake profile. Yes, there are many fake profiles on LinkedIn. And you, you know, you don't want yours to be considered one of them. And this is one of the things that can stop people from accepting your connection requests or taking you less seriously. Okay, let's now come to number two, your LinkedIn profile banner. This is a big space on the screen and it's like LinkedIn giving you a banner, okay? Giving you a billboard. And then imagine if you decide not to use it, okay? Who's going to lose out? You, okay? This is an opportunity for you to further build credibility and get across quickly what is the key, who do you help and how do you help, okay? Those are the key things that we want on that, okay? So you can see an example of a, a client here has done it really well. So on the top left-hand side in the banner, 
and the orange uh, background, you know, uh, outline shows what what I'm considering to be the banner. Above his photo, he's got his um, logo. So you, you can put your logo just above on the top. So why, you know, initially we will look at the profile photo and then we will look uh, up and to the right. So, you know, having the, your logo just up there uh, is good. Then to the right, you can see he's, he's chosen an interesting photo. Uh, and because it's in the stock market, he's got that bear and the bull. Okay. And if you see to the right, helping senior corporate professionals and business owners create wealth. And he's got two keywords, stockbroker and financial planner. Okay. So this is a fabulous example of someone who's utilized their banner in absolutely the right way. Very succinct and immediately I understand who he is, what he does, who he helps, okay? Um, and I don't even, you know, have to look below his name, okay? Um, so use it to brand yourself and communicate clearly how you help your target market. Who's your target market and how you help? Okay, here's another example. Okay, uh, so you can see Lena's used it here. She's in the corporate gifting uh, side. So she's used it here wonderfully well. Um, this is mine, you know, I've used some key search terms here. So business mentor, LinkedIn expert, etc. Okay. I've also used photos with some famous people. And what that does, it amplifies my authority and credibility. So when you're thinking, what should I put in that banner? There's no right or wrong, but essentially you want to have these three things. Will it positively amplify my authority, credibility, and expertise? Then yes, include it. If it removes any of them or makes it less, then don't include them, okay? So, so this is some examples. And I created this. Um, I had one of my clients create this for me, but you know, you can easily create something like this in Canva. Uh, it, it already has that. Canva.com is a free software that allows you to put together things like this. Okay. What is the mistake you should avoid? Okay. Instead of this aqua blue green uh, background, it's become gray. So don't have that, you know, or don't put a photo just of a landscape, you know, like, I don't know, of a mountain or something like that. Uh, you know, use it to communicate exactly what you want. People don't have much time. Within a few seconds, people are going to decide whether they should accept that connection request or not, or whether they should take you seriously or not. And if you've got the right banner, the right photo, then immediately, you know, remember, your brain is processing images 60,000 times faster than text. Then you're already ahead of the curve. Okay, so action points. Update your optimized profile photo and banner. Okay, next, let's come to something called the profile headline. And where is the profile headline? And this is one that I see people use absolutely the wrong way. Uh, too many mistakes here. And if you, you're probably, if you don't know about this, you're probably making this mistake right now. So, you know, I'm not going to ask you to tell me if you're making this mistake. So what is this mistake? Most people end up using their company and job title, like managing director, CEO, company name, okay, in the headline. And that is absolutely not the right thing to have. It is one of the most visible parts of your LinkedIn profile. And the search algorithm is driven by this. So if you have not put in the right search engine optimized keywords in the headline, you will not be found. Your competitors who know about this will show up and you will lose opportunities. So where is the headline? You can see here, under my name is the headline, okay? So you can see I put search terms here. Um, 
you can see my current one is different. So, you know, this was, um, you know, maybe about a year and a half ago. I want to just quickly show you what does it look like right now. Okay, so I'll do a desktop share. One more desktop share. Here we go. <clears throat> so here you can see LinkedIn lead generation, LinkedIn strategy, LinkedIn expert, LinkedIn training, LinkedIn sales, personal branding, business mentor, etc. Um, and you can see it's a slightly different photo that I have there as well. Okay, so it's important. Now, your company name can come in your experience section. You can see here my company name is there, your founder, CEO, but I've also used some other search terms here. Um, you know, so you, you can end up doing that, okay? So it's not to say that you don't have your company name and things like that, but use that in your experience section, okay? This, you can have up to 220 characters. Uh, so each letter is a character, a space is a character, okay? Not words. Uh, so use them wisely and use them in terms of what key, what would your target market be searching for, okay? So you want to use it in that particular way, okay? Is this all making sense? I want to check in with everyone. How's everyone doing? Are you finding value out of what I'm sharing? Yes, yes, definitely. Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast? Speed is okay here. Okay, good, good, okay. Okay, good, awesome. All righty, okay, let's, let's keep it moving on. Okay, <clears throat> so typically this is one of the things that we immediately have to work on. So please do look at optimizing uh, that. And one of the things that you see that I, I use here, like in this case, I help consultants win high value business on LinkedIn. Okay, so you know, that's kind of your mini elevator pitch. And, uh, you know, I help, who do you help? You know, is it exporters, importers, uh, you know, CAs, whoever it is that you help to do what's the key result that that target market wants that you help them achieve, okay? So you can have that and you can even have that in the banner, okay? So as we saw Kostub Kale uh, use in his, you know, he used it really effectively well, okay? Now, mistakes not to make. Don't use your title. As I showed you, you can have that in the experience section uh, next to your company, okay? Don't use TLAs. What are TLAs? Three letter abbreviations. Fun story. One day I was talking to a professor. We were talking about SMEs. I thought I was talking about subject, I mean, um, small and medium-sized enterprises because typically I work with entrepreneurs. So. SME, you know, that's what I understood. As we were having the com conversation, it became clear that he meant something different. So I said, sir, uh, what do you mean by SME? He said, subject matter expert. I was like, oh, okay. So we mean something completely different, although we're using the same three letter abbreviation. So please don't do that. Don't assume your target market understands the industry jargon. Okay, uh, imagine that you're talking to, you know, a seven-year-old and you're trying to get across uh, things in a very simple, easy way. Okay, simple and easy works and is more effective. Okay, so revise your headline with relevant keywords. That's a key action point. Okay, about section. Okay, the about section is what is... Kind of, it used to be called the summary section. And it's almost like a mini website. And this is something that I see people not use uh, very well. Uh, they hardly put a few sentences in and they, they don't uh, clarify. If someone is interested in working with you, they will look through this. Um, so 
I have some key sections, you know, and you will notice that the layout that I've used here, it's short paragraphs, okay? Uh, there is space, I've used icons, I've used bullet points, I've used some emojis, okay? And I have a clear call to action. And this is something which is very prospect facing. So I've used some key terms like, what do I do? How I do it? Why it works? Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, this is an older version. You can see a slightly different version, but it pretty much, you know, has that. You know, what are the services I provide? Um, where, where have you seen me before? What types of businesses do I work with? You know, a testimonial, what others say about me? And then what's the next action? You know, if people want to connect to me, how should they connect to me? You know, do you expect people to ring you, email you, WhatsApp you, you know, book a call using a link, whatever it is, okay? So these are some things, uh, I know I'm going through this fast, but I don't have time right now to really go into it, okay? <clears throat> but again, you're looking to ace it in this section. So again, add things that will build your authority, credibility, and highlight your expertise, okay? And is target market facing. This is not for your CV, your resume. Uh, do not use industry jargon here. Don't write it in third person. Like, you know, don't say like Neeraj is, uh, you know, use like I am. You, know, you want people to connect to you as if they, you are talking to them directly. Um, you can have up to 2,600 characters. So again, use all of them and make sure that you have a call to action. Make it easy for people to understand what action you want them to take next. Finally, let's come to one key element that is going to immediately build trust, which is social proof. Like you have Google reviews, Yelp reviews, Zomato reviews, uh, Facebook reviews, LinkedIn has recommendations and it, it, clients that you have worked with are able to say good things about you know, the, your work. And when people are unsure or when people are trying to make a decision and they're not sure, this helps build trust very quickly, okay? So you want to use it. So you can see here, um, I have 70 plus uh, recommendations and you know, th this is a, uh, the kind of recommendation that you want. So you know, like what kind of work does this person do? You know, like, so this Dipti is like now saying, you know, why she's working with me, what results I've helped her achieve and why, would she recommend me, okay? So the, these are some of the things that you want. How do you get people to give you a recommendation? You will see a little uh, ask, a recommendation, a little uh, pencil icon there in gray. You click it and then you can ask people for it. You need to be connected to these particular people. And therefore, if you're not connected, then it's important that they become a first degree connection before you can ask them for that, okay? And what I would say to you is that you want uh, five current or past satisfied clients uh, to write uh, these for you, okay? I would follow them up with a short phone call uh, because not everyone checks their LinkedIn and say, look, this is one of the important things I'm doing and I really value your um, help with this. You can even offer to write it for them and say that, look, I'm going to write you a small draft. Feel free to edit it however you want. And you'll be amazed. Most people will 80% use uh, exactly what you've given. So it's almost like you have to become good at writing your own testimonials. Um, uh, you know, and that, that's the way it is. But you know, it's a really important part of your profile. So make sure you have at least five. Why? Because uh, LinkedIn will take you more seriously 
and then we'll show you higher in search results. So it very positively impacts your uh, search results, okay? So here we've covered the five things, profile filter, banner, headline, about section, and recommendations. I've gone a little bit fast for some of them, okay? Because I need to cover some other things um, and you know th there's, there's little time remaining. So what I want to do, I had promised you a gift, okay? If you just, take a um, screenshot of this, or if someone from the 10 team can help put this uh, in. Um, okay, let me do this. Uh, let me put this in the chat. Let me put this in the chat so that you can get this. Okay, so I put together a little free ebook, which takes you through eight things, not just one thing and shows you examples and, and what to do. So you can get access to it and actually continue to work on. Okay, so you should be able to get access to it there. All you need to do is put your name and email ID, okay? So uh, you can do that. Um, let's come back here. Okay, so that's my little gift to you use that and you will be able to make immediate progress on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, now let's move on to the next part. How do we help you identify the right people on LinkedIn and begin to proactively, strategically build a powerful network? Okay, I'm sure all of you want a powerful network. So how do we begin to do that? Okay. There is a simple three-step formula to become visible to your target audience. First, you need to know how to find them. So that's step one, which is search, and I'll show you with some examples. Second, you've got to visit their profile. And third, you've got to engage with their post if they're posting, uh, or just seeing what sort of things are they liking, okay? So, LinkedIn, as I said, is a very powerful search engine and it is a database that has much more information available, like the person's job title, what industry, you know, uh, even size of firm and things like that. Now, size of firm and turnover and things like that, uh, you have to go for the paid version of LinkedIn, but otherwise, you know, all these other things you're able to get for free. So let me uh, quickly show you how you can uh, get that. Okay, so I will show you on uh, screen. So let me go back to LinkedIn, okay? And if you see here next to the LinkedIn logo, there is something called search, okay? So take for example, you need to deal with CEOs or, you know, what's another name that people use, okay? Some use managing director. And if you're looking at the international market, maybe uh, in C for CEOs may be relevant for the American market, but in the European market, you know, they might use the word managing director. And use a capital here or, and it is in inverted commas. So that means that it is gonna specifically search for people who have this particular exact title, CEO or managing director, okay? So I put that, uh, I click enter, and then it will begin to, I, I want it to show me uh, people, okay? Uh, oops, okay. So now you can see here, suddenly I have 9.4 million people who, suddenly come up with that. Now, 9.4 million people is too many. Okay, so you can see here connections, locations, and all filters. So I will go to all filters. Now, if I wanna know who are people that are already connected to me, then I would check this first degree connections, okay? But if I want to connect to new people, then what I want to do is I want to go to second degree connections. So that means that these are people that are 
I'm not connected to directly, but I know there's at least one person in common that we have, okay? So I will use second degree, and then, you know, you decide that where do you want them to be? So let's for this particular exercise say that we want someone in Mumbai, and then, you know, which company do they work in currently? Uh, I don't know the company for a moment, but, you know, because it could be a number of companies. Uh, you can even check past companies, but for a moment, I, I don't even want to do that. Uh, say you are an alumni of a particular school. Remember in the US, when they're talking university, they say school, okay? So that's what they mean. So say you went to University of Mumbai. So then you can add that and then you can find people who are alumni of University of Mumbai. So it becomes easy for you to start the conversation. But the one that I would do is I would just do second degree uh, connection. I would add in your location and I'd be specific. And then I would get into what types of industries I'm in. So say I'm looking for people in financial services, okay? And I'm looking for people who are uh, doing consulting and say business consulting uh, for financial services, okay? Then when I click show results, so suddenly you can see from 9.4 million, it is now showing me 73 people, okay? And now what I will do is say, I found this particular person, so Sonali, and I will go and visit her profile. So here immediately I can see she's got 1,300 followers. Uh, she's got 500 plus connections. She talks about these sorts of things. Is she active? Then I can click on see all activity and I can already see that she's been doing stuff. Now, if someone has not been active, it will show me that there's been no, there'll be a little message here saying no activity in the last 90 days. Therefore, they're not someone who's active. So, you know, even you sending, me, sending them a connection request uh, will not be good, okay? You'll waste your time. And, you, and here I'm able to see, you know, she was an AVP vice president, so she's been in very senior uh, roles. Uh, and then, you know, I can mention that. So, um, you know, I, I know some uh, top people at City, so I'm able to mention that maybe as I send a connection request. Now, here, because she has got something called creator mode, it goes to follow, okay? But if you click on more, okay, you will see underneath here, connection. And then here, I can send her a message and, you know, uh, I, I, can, I can send, um, hi, Sonali, uh, you know, I was looking, for consultants and your profile showed up. I was very impressed and I'd like to connect with you here on LinkedIn. Um, okay, and you can then put a subject line and it says it's optional. So you can decide not to put that. And having a, sending a personalized connection request uh, will, will show that you have taken some time uh, to personalize it and say, hey, I see you work at Citibank. Uh, I know a number of senior people and you could name drop. Here, it also shows you who are some of the mutual connections. So, so here, like I know uh, uh, Mira, so I say, hey, I, I see you know Mira as well. I know him well. Um, how do you know him? So it, you can even start conversations, but that would be a secondary thing that you're able to do uh, later, okay? So this is a very easy, cool way for you to start connecting. Hiraj, whether the search option is available in uh, free version? It is only available yeah, in paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you're, you're exactly getting, all the things I just showed you is in the free version. Free version. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so so can you see here that you know uh, if you begin to search, visit their profile, do some detective work, and then engage with their uh, posts or you know their profile, then it becomes 
you will immediately become visible because if I put a comment on your post, then okay. you will get a notification that I have commented on you. Commented. And even if, if you and I are currently not connected, suddenly, and then I send you a connection request that, hey, you know, I've been really, uh, I really like the kind of things you write about and I wanted to connect to you. If you start out with a compliment, who's, who's going to say no to that? <laughs> you know, make it easy for people. And it's all about building relationships. People talk about ROI of networking. I think that's the wrong word. Don't look at, you know, it, that makes it very transactional. Instead, look at ROI, which is return on relationships. Look to build relationships. Look to build long-term relationships. This is a business networking platform. So just like how you build relationships at 10, uh, you know, when you're offline, <clears throat> you can begin to use some of these ways online. I'm showing you the virtual versions of these things. Now, this is one key thing that I've seen people make as a mistake, which is immediately after connecting, they start to sell. Hey, you know, I do this particular thing. Do you want to buy this product or service? <laughs> uh, it's the equivalent of you uh, proposing to a girl on the first date. You'll probably in this day and age now end up with a slap, okay? so. You know, if you meet someone who you find interesting, then, you know, maybe the next thing is you want to end up having a coffee with them. Okay, so you want to continue a conversation and then, you know, have a next meeting. And, and this is how you begin to continue to have a conversation. And the key thing is that if you begin to engage with them beforehand by commenting, liking, visiting their profile, seeing similarities, seeing things of interest, uh, if you read the articles, know what kind of business they're in, what kind of groups they're part of, and then you send them a personalized connection request, that is what really uh, will show that you are a genuine person. It's not so much about quantity, it's the quality of the right people. And LinkedIn is full of quality people. And if you know how to approach them in the right way, then you can immediately begin to connect. Now, why do I say that you need to do it in this particular way? Engage before connecting. LinkedIn has put some restrictions. You can only send 100 connection requests per week. This is something that has happened over you know, this uh, 2021. Why? Because people started using automated bots to send connection requests and really, you know, send out hundreds of connections requests per day and spam people. And, you know, LinkedIn and its members, the genuine members got upset by it. And as a result, LinkedIn cracked down. Therefore, each connection request that we send out is very important and we don't want to waste them. And if you do it in this particular way, then you will get uh, really good connection acceptance rates. You will get into 50 to 70%. So imagine uh, 50 to 70 people accepting your connection request. That's between two to almost 300 new connections uh, that you're growing by every month. Okay. That is uh, a good network growth. Okay. So some key action points, identify five people you want to connect to, visit their profile, gather intelligence, engage with the posts, and then send them a personalized connection request. Okay, now let's get into how do we profit? How are we able to begin to generate some high value leads and grow revenues? How do we begin to monetize this network? This is a key social selling principle. People will do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And you can't jump from no to trust. 
in the previous organization I was with, we were talking about a process called VCP. Visibility leads to credibility, leads to profitability. And you couldn't jump from visibility to profitability. And therefore, you've got to come with this sort of mindset where you can get people to know, like, and trust you and do it in that sequence. You can't jump straight from visibility to profitability. It is a process. And what are some simple ways in which you can do that? By you beginning to post on LinkedIn or send uh, messages through direct messaging. It will help you start conversation. You can share value. Uh, you can build trust by you know, saying, hey, you know, this is a su success story I've had recently. Uh, it might be of interest to you. I helped someone similar. Uh, you can share a how-to, which demonstrates your expertise. Uh, you can put some commentary related to your industry and you can develop relationships. You can ask more questions about the person. And doing all of these things regularly will keep you in the limelight. And when people are ready to consider your product or service, then you will be the most visible and credible person. And therefore, this will help you generate new business. Posting on LinkedIn is the easiest way for you to generate inbound leads, but you can't just be, do promotions all the time. You've got to do a mix of things. Okay, So let me show you some of the things that you can end up doing. Okay, this is a short content post. So this is no image. It's like literally I've chosen a quote that I had read and which inspired me and I put that. So never let success go to your head and never let failure get to your heart. Great. And the cool thing was that, you know, if, if you know who Drake is, he's a rapper. So you know, typically people don't expect to see a rapper being quoted on LinkedIn. So you can see it got some 10,432 views, okay? So this is a very simple, short post and it's a Monday motivation post. And you can see I've used the hashtag uh, for that. Yeah, this is a long content post. So in this case, I'm actually talking about how my company adds value, but I'm doing it by highlighting some customers that we were are working with and then you can see here at the bottom there is a call to action if you'd like an exclusive invitation to attend our next meeting then type mastermind below so therefore if someone is interested in attending a mastermind meeting then they will let me know so instead of me trying to spam everyone then you know only people who type mastermind below then I, if we're not connected i connect with them i check out the profile connect with them and then send them a invite. Okay, third type of post you can end up doing. This is to highlight your expertise. So this is a quote post. So obviously one of the key things that I'm an expert at is marketing. <clears throat> so I've, I've quoted Reid Hoffman, who's, who's one of the founders, the original investor in uh, LinkedIn, and I tagged him, but you know, I put my own version of this. So you can see it's not a very long post, uh, but it became a trending post in marketing on LinkedIn. Okay. So this is a very simple thing. And I, I created this for free on Canva. One of my assistants uh, created. So I curate some um, quotes and then I say, hey, put, put it together in um, a nice little image like this. You could end up doing a video post. So, you know, this is someone who did a small, short video clip. And don't do YouTube uh, links. Uh, you want to upload directly the video onto the LinkedIn server. Okay. So you can see here, this guy has had some 15,000 uh, views, which, which is really good. Okay. So you can do that. Next. You could have something called a document post. What is a document post? Here you can see that you, if you were on the mobile, you could scroll to, uh, you know, it says swipe uh, to the right, and you can move your finger, you know, to the left, and you will be able to see a slide deck. Okay. 
this sort of post, the LinkedIn algorithm absolutely loves. Uh, the text is very big, so it will be seen on a mobile uh, phone. And the headline is very strong, and it's one of my key core expertise. And I know that this is a problem that people face. And you can see that this had some 75,000 views. Okay, So this is something that you can end up doing. And this is a great way to highlight your expertise. Okay, so these are some simple ways in which you can begin to post. Now, I will say only post three times a week. This is not a platform where you need to post every day or multiple times a day. In fact, you will do yourself this uh, injustice if, if you do that. Okay, uh, try and post during the working hours. I typically do in the mornings. Um, and if necessary, you can tag some relevant people. Don't tag hundreds of people. Uh, but type, you know, two, three people that you know that are likely to respond back. Okay. So I hope with this, each of you are now convinced that LinkedIn is for me. Now you're much more aware of what you can end up doing on this particular platform. And you have some simple ways in which you can begin to move forward and become more active on LinkedIn. So I wanted uh, just to check how are, how are people doing? Um, was this of value? I'll put it in gallery view. If you have questions, I'm happy to uh, take sure. questions. Yeah. 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 Thanks, thanks, Neeraj. Thank you so much. One of the most interactive session we have had in recent times. Let me tell you. Uh, so uh, before handing over to Mangesh for the questions the session, I have one question from myself. It's not related to the uh, discussion today. It's okay. more of because of my inquisitiveness. Okay. Uh, the name of your business is Titan uh, Masterminds, right? Yes, that's right. So did you have any problem using the name Titan? Because Titan is already a brand name with Tata for their watches. Uh, no, it's, it's a, uh, we have it registered. It, it's part of our company. If you uh, look at ROC, you okay. will, you'll find Titan Masterminds LLP uh, there. So I've had no issue with that. And, okay. and no one's Thank ever you. contacted me. Yeah. Yes, Mangesh, you can take yeah. it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Rao. Neeraj, with your kind permission, I want to share your recent post with all the participants. Just... Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, free, free. This, this was this post in your last month. Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that summarizes everything. <laughs> if you wish to learn, follow. If you wish to engage, comment. If you wish to agree, like. If you wish to support, share. If you wish to inform, post. And uh, what I want to tell you is uh, the posting, there's only 5% of the 774 million people that are actually posting. So if you are one of the people that post, then your likelihood of being seen is massive. And therefore, the organic reach is, is super high. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful. We'll start the Q&A with my question, uh, Hiraj. Yeah. How much time you spend on LinkedIn on a daily basis? I think so. This will be the question for most of the participants. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to tell people, if, if you're in the beginner journey, okay, then uh, pick, pick a specific time every day, okay, and and only log in to the platform there. And I, I would say 15 minutes a day. In my case, you know, because this is my primary business, okay, I will be on LinkedIn three times a day, okay. For 15 minutes a day. So, you know, from 8, you know, uh, 55, you know, to 9, 10, <laughs> uh, you know, 12, 45 to 1, and then uh, 5, 30 to 5, 45. So those are my uh, three times that I have set for myself, uh, you know, to do. And I, I post three, three times a week, you know, but on the other times, I'm interacting with people, I'm engaging with posts, I'm doing searches, I'm finding good people to connect with. 
and, and keeping the conversation going. So you can actually do it very easily with 15 uh, minutes a day. Okay, thank you. Participant uh, will not be able to unmute yourself considering the number of participants. Uh, I'll request uh, you to put your question over chat box. Uh, we will take from the chat box. Next question, uh, Neeraj is from Santosh Kaikwad. Uh, his specific request is about the hashtag. Yeah. How hashtag keywords uh, has to be uh, you know mentioned in while posting it on LinkedIn? Yeah, hashtag is a more complex and advanced feature as far as uh, hashtags go. But the research uh, that we have, and, and I, I, I take a very data-driven approach to marketing, okay, shows that you don't want to have more than nine hashtags. Okay, this is not Instagram where you're having 20 to 30 hashtags or something like that, okay? But the best is between three to five. And what you want to do is make sure that at least one of them is related to your uh, post, okay? Uh, one of them is a more broader one that is related to your personal brand or, or other things that you talk about. And one is a personal branded one. So in my case, uh, I have one LinkedIn by Nira Shah, okay? And, and people actually follow it and I will prompt people to say, you know, follow me. Uh, with this hashtag to find uh, people. Now, it, you, yours could be a company name or it could be your personal name, depending on which brand uh, you want to build uh, for, further. Okay. I, I have a post on hashtags as well. Uh, you know, so you'll be able to find it on my document posts uh, that are there. So if you look at posts and activity, you find one. It's you know it's a very detailed post. Okay. Next question. We are getting this question from most of the participant, Neeraj. The question yeah. is that uh, once we send a connection request and if we don't receive any, you know, uh, uh, replied from the uh, the content which we want to connect, what should be the ideal action time to repeat the connection request? Yeah. Uh, for, first of all, uh, you should you should not give. Uh, more than three months, okay? So what happens is, let's say you sent a connection request. Why? Because some people only check it uh, monthly, okay? Uh, and then they may have many connection requests. So then, you know, yours might be down, further down in, in the pile, and therefore you are not visible and they don't get uh, around to doing it, okay? So what do you end up doing? First of all, if you have too many pending requests outstanding, okay? then it lowers your credibility in the eyes of the LinkedIn algorithm. Therefore, you must withdraw your connection request. Okay, And then for the next three weeks, it will not allow you to send uh, a connection request to that same person. And then if you want to send it again, say, you know, send it again and say, hey, I'm bumping this up. You may have missed it. You know, mention that in your uh, um, message and say, uh, I'm, I'm sending this to you again because you may have missed it. So then it lets people know that, yeah, you are serious about connecting with them. But if you do the strategy, which I'm telling you, which you become visible to them through liking, posting, I mean, and commenting on their posts, that will be the easiest way. And then you can say, hey, you know, I'd like to connect with you. I'm sending you a connection request. Put that on the comment post and then send them a connection request then you're more likely to uh, get it. Next question is from our own member, Mr. Kandan. Uh, he had seen a video profile in your LinkedIn uh, profile. So yeah. is it something which is available in free version or specifically? It's available in the free version. It, it is something new which LinkedIn has rolled out this year. It's called something called a like cover story. So I'll just show you. Uh, it is a 30 second video, okay? And you can only... Uh, it has to be kind of, you want to be less than 30 seconds. So you want to uh, time that clip and you can only upload it through your mobile phone. Okay. So let me just quickly show that to you on the screen so that you're able to see it on my uh, profile so to, to understand what it is. Oops. Uh, okay. So you see here, uh, yes. it says view or edit uh, profile photo. 
and then view or edit cover story. So hi, I'm here to shine. It's great to meet you. I'm a LinkedIn expert and I'm also a marketing purchase speaker. I help consultants and purchase to get $10,000 plus clients using LinkedIn in the next six days. On my profile, you'll find a LinkedIn scorecard, marketing templates, and posts which are all there. To okay, so you know, in that way, it just uh, gives you that visual movement uh, on uh, a site which is very static. And if you include the correct type of elevator pitch, uh, then, then it can help you stand out uh, in, in the right way. Okay. Another uh, common question which we are getting from most of the participants, whether to have two LinkedIn accounts, one is for your personal account and one is for your company account. So you should be having a company LinkedIn page, a company LinkedIn page. Like how you have Facebook business pages, you need to have a company LinkedIn page. Do not on any circumstance have a company personal profile and a individual company, I mean, in your individual profile. Uh, you know, that doesn't work. Um, you want to use the company page and I'll tell you something that your personal profile has 10 times more visibility than your LinkedIn company page. So the main one that you want to use is your personal profile. Okay. Uh, dear participant, due to positive of Lyme, will not be able to take further questions. Okay. Uh, uh, Neeraj has already shared his LinkedIn profile along with the QR code. If you have any more question, you can directly get in touch with uh, Neeraj. Over to you, Rahul. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mangesh. Uh, thanks, Neeraj, for such a lucid and easy to understand talk on uh, how do we optimize the use of LinkedIn in the minimum possible time. I'd heard a lot about you from Deepak, uh, Mangesh, Rajiv, Ram, and many tenors. But after listening to you today, I feel uh, they knew very little about you. <laughs> so, so thank you again for your time and insights. Um, and I would kind of request uh, our uh, member, Mr. R. Kannan, to uh, present the formal vote of thanks. And uh, before that, I would request all the participants to be connected for next two to three minutes. We'll conclude after that. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Kannan. Just unmute yourself, Kannan. You're still on mute. I think Mangesh, do you have to uh, get in or he can, he's not able to do it, I think. Mute. Ah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, Kannan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I not thought him, actually. Now we want you to speak, yeah. Yeah, in fact, I thought that, you know, like you were reminding me that I'm still married. You know, yeah, I can't <laughs> Anyway, Neeraj, it was a wonderful session and I really loved the way that, you know, your PPT was, uh, you know, formatted because it was so good. It is not clustered with so much of information. I, I like the way you showed it even in your own LinkedIn post also that you make it as a, you know, swiping out to the next because it makes it very interesting when you make it very crisp and showing it. I personally found it very, very helpful. And uh, just to tell you, because I have really come out of business and I'm again doing the second innings, I was not really keen, but after listening to you, I really feel that, you know, LinkedIn is something I'm really missing out and I need to, and I'm sure that many of the people, I see in the comment box also, everybody loved the session, you know, it is extremely helpful. And you are very crisp. That is one thing I should uh, really appreciate. You are very crisp. You are not uh, going on to some other topics. And your PPT was extremely useful. And uh, only I just wanted to know this premium version. It is other than connecting, sending messages to the, your non-connect. Is there anything other ob uh, obvious advantages so that everybody can hear you out? Yeah, they, there are two versions. There is the business version and there's the sales navigator version. The sales navigator version is like the Formula One car, okay? And uh, it's, if you don't know how to drive and we put you behind a Formula One car, you're going to end up killing someone mm -hmm. or yourself, okay? So it's best not to uh, do that until you've done some of the work that I've said in terms of optimizing. It then allows you to uh, search, sales navigator allows you to search according to specific uh, size of companies in terms of turnover, 
uh, employee count, uh, those sorts of things. And you're able to save these searches. So that's the extra functionality that you were able to get. It's I think about $70 uh, a month. And then you've got the uh, business version, which just allows you to do a little bit more search and uh, it gives you uh, whoever's viewed your profile, uh, you know, you'll be able to see everyone who's viewed your profile. Now, for me, that is important because uh, that's an easy way for me to start conversations with people. And I've got lots of business just doing that. Okay. <laughs> I love the way you said, you know, return on relationship yes. and also engaging before connecting. This is yes. one mistake even I used to make early on that, you know, well, when you want a person to be connected to you, you immediately send a connect and also without a personal message. It is the stock, uh, you know, connecting thing, which we used to send. A lot of learnings and a lot of take home today. Uh, sincerely, thank you. And that's I, it. I, I, I have one request. If you found this of tremendous value, okay. Uh, one of the things that I'm looking to do on LinkedIn is uh, if you go down, uh, scroll right down to the end of my profile, there'll be something called endorsements. Okay. Yes. And if I can just quickly just show you that uh, on my screen, if you can endorse me for LinkedIn training, if you found this of value. Okay. Yes. So if you kind of uh, go down here where it says skills and endorsements and just click on LinkedIn training uh, and endorse me for that. Uh, it's like literally take you one second. And uh, you know it will help me build sure, further sure credibility. We'll surely do it. We'll surely do, we'll it. Surely do it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for. Oh. I'll do the concluding remarks now, and then we'll end the session. Uh, so, friends, what you saw today is what ten members share every week: positive energy, knowledge about what's happening in the industry, support to an operational problem that is beyond our domain expertise, an opportunity to learn from and mentor fellow entrepreneurs. An added benefit is a chance to attract a lot of more business. So who should join 10 and why? Budding and established entrepreneurs are welcome to join 10. 10 is committed to support, promote, and develop entrepreneurs, and our activities are focused on building the entrepreneur community. Please take a call on becoming a part of 10. Annual membership is rupees 15,000, and 2,000 is one time registration fees. So thank you all for attending today's uh, meeting and making a positive contribution. Thank you. So we conclude and end the meeting. Thanks once again, Neeraj. Thank you. For the Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good day to all. Good day. Bye. Bye.